So, my name is Andrea Aime, I work for GeoSolutions. We are a company, uh, one of the companies behind GeoServer. We are about open source, open standards, and today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, handling uh, remote sensing imagery uh, in, uh, in GeoServer, basically. So, the use case is, let's say you have a lot of satellite imagery, uh, drone data, and uh, remote sensing in general, and you want to uh, distribute it uh, through your platform using your server. How do you go about it? Well, typically the first step, when you have a ton of data, is finding the data that you want, so search. Initially, in your server, we implemented the open search for EO, which is an OGC specification. Uh, it's an adaptation of the open search uh, protocol uh, geared towards sp space-time and uh, satellite imagery in general. Uh, the idea is that you have a bunch of collections, the collections contain uniform products, and the products typically point to uh, raster files that in, uh, in GeoServer we call granules, in the Stack API they would you would call them items, or actually assets. Uh, and, uh, um, and yeah, that, so that's the, the base model. Uh, in open search for EO, you typically do a two-step search, so one, the first step, the, the first search, is to locate the collections that you are interested in too. So for example, you say, okay, this area, this space, this time, which collections do cover this, this area? And you get a list of collections. You decide which ones uh, you're interested in too, and then you drill down into the collections looking for the products. Say, I want, okay, this area, this time, less than 10% cloud cover. Uh, this is a sample search, so open search is a uh, protocol based on get request and uh, that URL is telling me, okay, I want to locate all the Sentinel-2 images with less than 30% uh, cloud coverage and of course I have access to uh, a bunch of other attributes to do my search. The output uh, typically is a RSS feed, which uh, nowadays is a little bit outdated, uh, I understand it, and uh, um, since 2021, you can also get uh, GeoJSON output with uh, much of the same information. Typically, the output has lots of links, uh, which is common to Stack API, really. Um, uh, so the idea is that the RSS would not contain much information, but it would link to a metadata sheet uh, in ISO or GML observation and measurement to describe the collection or the product. And then, uh, interesting uh, enough, it would also link to OGC services to consume the data. It could also link to the data itself, like Stack API does, but is, it's interesting to see that in open search, the focus was still on uh, giving you a WMS or a WCS, or so an OGC protocol that you could use to look and download the data. We implemented also Stack API based on the same uh, database, underlying database. Um, so, uh, a stack API, not a catalog, so I'm talking about a dynamic uh, search engine that you can query much like open search for EO. It's based on OGC APIs, it's fully based on uh, JSON, uh, open, uh, open API, and so on. And uh, we implemented the search uh, endpoint, which allows for filtering, sort sorting, and field selection, cross-collection. Uh, this is a, a, um, a bunch of screenshots that I took from the DLR implementation of uh, uh, our Stack API. So in, in GeoServer, we have templates that you can use to control both the JSON and the HTML uh, representation of uh, everything, like landing page, collections, items, and so on. And so DLR has made a very good job, in my opinion, at customizing it. So... <laughs> Uh, here, are, uh, here is the page showing the collections available, and I can drill down into one, get the detail about one collection, then I can drill down and get a list of the items in that collection, and uh, uh, eventually get into a single item with uh, uh, a map with the footprint, the thumbnail, and all the assets for download uh, of the data, or direct usage, because they might be linking to a cloud-optimized geotiff, and then I could stream directly from that source. Um, we also have a, a backend REST API, so that you can go and manage uh, the, the, the collections, the, the products, the granules, and so on, so that you can automate the, the management of that um, 
uh, of the contents of the database. Okay, say that I found what I want. Uh, I know which products I want. So now, how do I access that raster data? Well, uh, as I said, Stack and OpenSearch, they both have links, typically to, to services, but also to uh, the unit elements that make up the product, so the assets. Um, they, in GeoServer-wise, they might be located on the local file system, which is like kind of the most common use case, but also the less, in, the, the, the less interesting one. Or they could be put on a HTTP server, on a S3 uh, bucket, or Azure blob, or, you know, any cloud uh, blob storage. And uh, we can read directly from those blob stores using the COG plugin, uh, the Cloud Optimized Reader, uh, which leverages the code structure. In GeoServer, we also have an older reader that uh, could read literally any GeoTIFF, no matter whether it was formatted as a COG or not. It's less efficient, but it's more general. Uh, the COG plugin is smart enough to, you know, get the header of the file and just, then just do HTTP range reads to just get the, the tiles that it needs without having to read anything else. Um, it currently works against S3, HTTPS, uh, Google Storage. We are implementing it on Azure Blob these days, like it's going to be available in weeks. And uh, we might get... Uh, local caching of the blog contents, which would be interesting for speed. If you're interested, uh, please contact me. And of course, more uh, blob, blob storage options. No, okay, I can get to the raster data. How do I put it together? Typically with an image mosaic. Uh, typically I've located a bunch of products, not just one, and I want to see them. So uh, we use the uh, GeoServer mosaicing uh, machinery to uh, go and locate the data. The mosaicing machinery is powerful enough that I can fetch and mosaic together data in different coordinate reference systems, different color models, different resolutions, which is, by the way, uh, very important for, uh, say, Sentinel-2, where each product is in a different UTM zone and different bands have different resolutions and so on. So this kind of freedom is actually very important to get things going. Uh, the mosaic index typically is stored in a database like uh, PostJS, Oracle, SQL Server, but it could also be located in a shapefile or other sources. I'm gonna get there in a moment. And uh, well, it's typically looking more or less like a table where I have the location of the image, its footprint, but also all the attributes that I would like to use for filtering and sorting and stacking the images. So uh, the time, the elevation, the runtime of the weather model uh, and so on. Um, so, as, as I was saying, we have dimensions. Dimensions are then recognized by OGC protocols. So, if I look at the WMS capabilities document or the WCS capabilities document, I would uh, find a description of the time domain or the elevation domain and so on that the clients can then use to, uh, you know, uh, filter down the data that they want. Uh, interesting enough, we can use the stack slash open search database as an index for an image mosaic. So if, if I have implemented stack or open search in my system, there's a, a quick API, a REST API that I can use to say, please make me a layer out of this collection. And it literally pipes directly into, into that database. Uh, what I'm working on literally these days, I'm sort of halfway in the implementation, is the idea of having GeoServer connected to an external stack API uh, treat it as, a, as an index of sorts, and, uh, and then uh, being able to display on the map the footprints, filter them, and then eventually flip to raster representation if the stack API is pointing to cogs, to cogs that I can access. A uh, bunch of links, they are there for you to follow uh, when you get a hold of the presentation lies, slides if you are interested. Uh, with Image Mosaic, we can do uh, a bunch of uh, interesting stuff. So when you are mosaicing together several products, you probably want to filter, uh, and mosaicing allows you to filter on any attributes in the index, but also decide the stacking. Like, I want color images on top, or I want the most recent images on top, or less cloudy images on top. So you can uh, uh, perform sorting, and uh, if I'm talking to a, a stack API, hopefully it's implementing 
the, the sorting option, and I will literally flip the, the sort onto the Stack API, get the items that I want, and, and uh, mosaicing the imagery accordingly. Um, another interesting thing is coverage views, uh, which is this idea that I might have several raster layers that represent maybe different bands or different components of a phenomenon and stick them back together in a single raster that I can then use for visualization. This use case is showing taking two bands, which are U and V, the um, projection of the wind vector on the two axes, and putting them back together so that I can do math on them and display wind barbs. Another uh, use case is taking a Centrelink 2 imagery and uh, do false color imagery, or uh, I'm, I'm gonna get to it. Uh, I, I, I thought I, I had the NDVI uh, slide, but it, it's gonna get there. Okay, so uh, once I, I am ready to use the mosaic, I'm ready to visualize the data. Uh, visualize through WMS uh, or to OGC API maps. Uh, uh, WMS is going to export all the dimensions that I have in the capabilities document. Uh, I will be able to quickly filter on time and elevation and custom dimensions uh, through the uh, URL. Um, I will be able to do custom filtering using SQL filter or sorting and so on. And all, the, all that I do on uh, the WMS is going to be piped down into the original index which might be the Stack API, and then I'm gonna talk to the Stack API and say, this filter, this sorting. Uh, we can do a bunch of rendering transformations, which is the idea of taking data and processing it quickly to, to get a different display. So uh, contouring, uh, wind barbs, uh, currents, but also NDVI on the fly. So we have our little uh, map algebra uh, language that we can stick into uh, the styles to perform uh, simple index calculations such as ND NDVI, NDWI, and so on and so on. And uh, a bunch of other links that you can use. Then, if you are satisfied with the, with the data and you actually want to download it, um, you can use WCS, which is the OGC protocol to, to do that. WC the WCS 2.0 implementation in GeoServer is uh, complete, it, the protocol is sane, simple to use, um, and uh, um, well, in the description of the coverage, you, you get all the spatial and temporal information about, uh, about the coverage. And uh, we added a, a few uh, vendor extensions in GeoServer so that we can specify the same filtering and the same sorting that we applied in WMS, so that uh, I saw something and then I can download that particular mosaic with those products inside and get a GeoTIFF out of it uh, with the same structure. Um, however, WCS has some limitations in that uh, the requests are synchronous, so I'm sending the request, waiting on the HTTP link, and maybe I'm waiting half an hour, and I'm not gonna wait that long because something is gonna time out my request. So what do I do about large downloads? I can use WPS. WPS is the OGC protocol that has asynchronous request support built in. So we implemented um, in, um, in GeoServer a process that's called WPS download, which is designed to allow large downloads of both vector data and raster data. So I, I can uh, mm, hit a very large image mosaic and uh, wait whatever time is needed, and then uh, sometime later fetch 25 gigabytes worth of GeoTIFF out of, out of GeoServer without a timeout. So of course you, you're gonna have this user interface telling the user, okay, I'm waiting for the download, come back later, and uh, at some point it's gonna notify that the download is available. Uh, we can also do large rendered maps, so maybe uh, what you want to do is actually to to have a printable GeoTIFF, like uh, 20,000 by 40,000 NDVI properly colored image, which is also something that you wouldn't be able to do with get a map uh, with WMS for the same reason, it's synchronous. So yes, I'm almost done. Um, and, um, and so we, uh, with WPS download, we can say, yeah, I want to download this very large map and it's gonna take whatever time I'm gonna wait. Uh, in addition to that, we can do long animations. So say that I have, a, like in this case, a MeteorSat uh, time series, and I wanted to make an MP4 uh, video out of it. 
with WPS download, I can also instruct the, the server to work on a certain layer and uh, um, a certain amount of time, uh, uh, time range, build the frames, build my animation, and after some time, I can download my MP4 with the animation. And with that said, I'm done.